But then it was recognized that our original intent to go to the West or not to support the East is what we had in our archive and in yeah. our heads uh, was recognized and then we were asked to do something to help the West in building up a new rocket. The Korean War came along about the time and Great Hopes was put on the development of a 150-mile rocket which we later became the Redstone yeah, rocket. I know, yeah. And then we had full support with very minimal means. I mean, for several years we had five million dollars or something. I know. Yes, it was a very small effort, but it, it worked out and the group got busy and started to develop American engineers in our line of thinking. vergessliche äh, Angelegenheit für mich. Wir hatten Herrn McElroy den ganzen Tag hier rumgeführt äh, auf unserem Redstone Arsenal Einrichtungen und Prüfständen und so weiter. Und etwa nachmittags um halb fünf oder so zog er sich für eine Stunde auf sein Zimmer zurück, um sich zu waschen und umzuziehen. Und wir wollten uns dann zum Abendessen wieder treffen. Und ich ging während dieser einen Stunde in mein Büro auf. Das klingelte das Telefon und da waren äh, Reporter von New York am Apparat und er fragte mich, was ich denn für einen Kommentar dazu hätte. Und ich fragte ihn, äh, wozu? Ich hatte keine Ahnung. Und er sagte, ja, haben Sie denn nicht gehört? Die Russen haben gerade eben einen Satelliten erfolgreich in Orbit gebracht. Und äh, Sie können sich vorstellen, dass das natürlich das Gespräch das des Abends war. Ja. Und äh, ich sagte dann äh, dem neuen Verteidigungsminister, er war, hatte noch nicht sein Amt angetreten, er war ja, noch... Ja auf einer Rundreise, um sich zu orientieren. Und ich glaube, er trat sein Amt erst vier Wochen später an. Ich sagte ihm, wenn Sie nach Washington zurückkommen und Sie finden, dass äh, da die Hölle los ist über diese russische Leistung, dann ähm, erinnern Sie sich bitte daran, dass wir binnen 60 Tagen das auch machen können, einen Satelliten in die Umlaufbahn zu bringen. Äh, mein äh, Boss damals, der General Bruce Maderas, der unterbrach mich dann und sagte, Werner, warum wir es nicht lieber 90 Tage machen als 60? Ja, das ist eine der besten Geschichten around. Weil es passiert, dass der neu genannte Sekretär der Defense, McElroy, der Mr. Wilson's Platz als Sekretär der Defense nahm, was on a trip around to the various installations to get acquainted and was visiting us at Huntsville, the Missile Command, the night that we got word of the launching of the first Sputnik. The message was delivered to me and immediately to some other people there and began to be buzzed and Werner and I, as if we had been galvanized by the same spring, We got a hold of McElroy. We practically almost got a hold of him physically. Secretary. We both of us, I think, felt like shaking him. He was <laughs> the upcoming Secretary of Defense. And all we could say was, see, this is what's happened. Now, we can put something around in orbit, and we can do it. And, and we know we can do it, but nobody will let us, and we were on him. Well, the shock here was fantastic. Uh, The shockwave came, we had... Where were you? Uh, I was in Huntsville together with Werner von Braun and the incoming Secretary of Defense, McElroy, McElroy. was just yeah. visiting. And uh, there was a general on my left, and Werner was called out and came back, red head, and he said, Mr. Secretary, the Russians just launched the first satellite. The star went up in the east. And uh, the general on my side said, oh, that little bauble. But it the made... Not General Medell Medell no, no, oh, uh, no, in the country, but I do not wish no, to say okay. the name. Uh, that little bauble, and 
I think he would have liked to eat his words later on. And I still remember that Werner said we could do it in 60 days, and I said, no, Werner, that's too fast. We can do it in 90 days, and we did in 90 days. Good morning, gentlemen. Be seated, please. I have a very important announcement for you. We've been assigned the mission of launching a scientific Earth satellite. And we will use the Jupiter C configuration as a carrier that we developed along with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. I promised the Secretary of the Army that we would be ready in 90 days or less. Let's go, Werner. Uh, nahm er also die 90 Tage an und wir haben es nachher, glaube ich, nach 81 Tagen geschafft. Und wir haben es gar eingehalten. Ja, äh, wir bekamen das grüne Licht nicht gleich, weil ja. äh, Mr. McElroy ja natürlich das Amt ja. noch nicht angetreten hatte. Aber zwei Tage nachdem er Verteidigungsminister wurde, bekamen wir ein Telegramm. Ja. Es hieß ganz einfach, go ahead, McElroy. of triumph for General Medeiros and his staff. Werner von Braun and his technicians now try to reduce the Soviet fleet as much as possible. Elsewhere in the United States people are working on the satellite which has to be taken into space by the Jupiter of the Army. The leadership is in the hands of James Van Allen. But a very keen competition for the lead in space exploration arises between the Army, the Air Force and the Navy. The consequences are disastrous. The premature dream of the Navy vanishes into thin air. I put it this way, that we cannot and will not ever get into this race as we should so long as all of our objectives are short-term objectives. We've got to have no finite end to our objectives. The end of our objectives should be as far as we can see at any given time. But right now, we need a 10 to 12 year program that has as its ultimate goal the man domination of space. And if we don't, we're going to be in trouble.
The lift-off was a success, but it seemed an eternity before the first signals arrived from space that the satellite had reached its orbit. Hello, Lem. You can send this off to the secretary. That our satellite is definitely on orbit. The 31st of October 1957 there was an article in a Dutch newspaper that there were six satellites ready in the United States to be launched before Sputnik 1. <laughs> is that a true story? No, that's a slight exaggeration. The fact is that the basic... Um, in Huntsville? Yes, in the store. basic vehicles were there. We had six of the three-stage vehicles. We had no completed fourth stage, which was the satellite itself, but was also the final um, accelerator. And so it would not be proper to say that there were six that were ready to launch, because even after we did get the word to go ahead, we were on about as fast a time scale as we could have made to do it in about 60 to, or in about 90 days. Uh, to get them ready, finish them off, get some experiment in the satellite itself, Test get a compatible beeper system in there to communicate with the ground and um, um, test and, and be confident of the capability of the fourth stage. It took that long, so you couldn't say they were ready. We had the basic hardware, but not the satellites. We had offered to launch the first uh, satellite a long time, and we had one ready to go. We had a, a long-range missile based on the same principle, only no satellite in it, no solid rocket stage on that very last end. And I was inspected here, whether we had or did not have a solid rocket on that payload. And uh, because one was afraid we would put one in. So over a year we were capable of landing a satellite and we were not permitted to. For reasons General Eisenhower, the president at that time, did not wish to have a military rocket deliver a so-called peaceful satellite. It was the International Geophysical League, and it didn't want to do it. But he was influenced by groups of people, which is pretty well known today. And it was an inter-service uh, fight. The various branches of the services were fighting each other, and so the poor army was standing by with a ready satellite and wasn't permitted to launch it. But I think it was all to the good of the country. Because when Sputnik 1 came up and came over the horizon with this beep, which is beeping today in Russia, if you visit Russia, I'm told the remote villages, every radio announcer, whenever there's a break, what we have as, as signs here, that yeah. is a beep, 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 reminding how great they are. We had a, a, an impressive number of successful satellite and deep space flights during the past year. And I think in the area of scientific achievement, in the field of space exploration, uh, we probably have caught up very well. In fact, many people believe that we have produced more scientific knowledge with our smaller vehicles than the Russians have with their much larger ones. Do you share As, that opinion? In the scientific field, yes, sir. But I believe the Russians still have an edge on us in the payload capability, and it is for this reason that uh, it is felt that the Saturn booster uh, 